Kyle here from All Media Reviews. I'm getting used to that. From All Media Reviews, uh, here to continue on the vinyl series. Now I'm on the D's, and I'm going to do basically all the D's. I think almost all the D's. So anyway, I have, okay, starting off, this is Kai Dansberg, his album um, Pop Up Radio. He has the one song, it's a concept album. Um, I think it's Welcome to the Show. He mentions Jellyfish and Pink Floyd and everything like that. He was kind of, you know, passed along by the by like Roger Manning and stuff like that. It's it definitely has a like a jellyfish element to it. Um, I, I didn't get that much mileage out of it, but I know it was like this dream of his to um, release some of his albums on vinyl. He's from I think Germany, but anyway, yeah, I bought it. You know, it wasn't like a, a massive amount of money. I was supporting him, and I liked that song so. Um, so I have one album by the band The Darcy's. I've, I'm spacing on. I think I saw them open for someone. I don't even know if they're local. I don't think that. No, they're not. They opened for like Ramona Falls or something like that. I think I forget. Or maybe Menomina. Anyway, this is their album called um, Asia Interpreted. Asia. Oh, that's right. This is Asia Interpreted. This is the Steely Dan album interpreted by them. That's why it was a, sort of a big deal to get. Uh, it's like <laughs> looking at the track list, I'm like, wait a minute. So this is Asia. So. Um, but I haven't listened to it really. I remember buying it at, I think it was at the show, because I think, I, that's why I bought it, because it was, like, I think maybe it been the only vinyl they had. They had CDs, but anyway. So I have Dark Tranquility. I, a lot of death metal is something that I like. I mean, generally I like it. There's not too much of it I don't like, but I've never been, like, obsessed with. But Dark Tranquility, for a short window of time when I was getting into extreme metal, this album is specifically Fiction, uh, from 2007 was, I think it was 2007, yeah, 2016 it came out, was the one I went back to. I love the cloudy synths on this. I've never seen Dark Tranquility live. I have a couple of the other records on, or albums on CD, Character, and, but this is really, um, the one. I think it might be colored vinyl, but, um, I don't have time to open it up, of course, I'm trying to get through this. Maybe at a later time, but yeah, that's Fiction from 2007 from Dark Tranquility. Swedish, I think they're from Sweden. All right, so this is a long haul, so... All the stuff from the Deer Hunter and related Casey Crescenza. So, here is my copy of Act One: The Lake South and the River North from 2006. You know, I've shown these probably multiple times. I have a video I think I did on the Deer Hunter vinyl. I did show my color spectrum, of course, the other day. It's it's right here. Um, but here's my copy of Act Two: The Meaning of and All Things Regarding Miss Lady. Of course, these are the alternate newer covers. They, they issued these. I don't remember what year, but this is 2007. Um, then I have two copies of Act 3, as I've come to learn now. Then I have the original cover, and then the new cover, the, the re-release cover from 2009. And I'm going to get into the whole track list and stuff. I've done my Deer Hunter album reviews and stuff. I mean, Mustard Gas, of course, but you know, it's cool to have these the alternate covers. I don't have the box set, though. That was kind of why my reason is you have to spend a few hundred dollars to get a lot of these records I already had, but... So I have the Color Spectrum Sampler. So I have the Color Spectrum. I'll just pull it out again. Of course, this is the first pressing, the first issue of the Color Spectrum on 10-inch vinyl, um, colored vinyl. And then I have the Color Spectrum Sampler, too, uh, the compilation, which has a lot of the best songs on the Color Spectrum, but a lot of the songs aren't on here, of course. No, there's no mandala on here, among others. But it's still a good collection, a good, you know assessment of what you get with this but then if you like this you you're going to want to pick check this out especially of course um let me put that back so i don't have to worry about having an accident hopefully so then i have this which came out around the same time they he issued act one and act two on vinyl the first time together um i don't think the book actually has the original art but they just wanted he wanted to redo the artwork of course so this is that, that, that compilation. I have a bunch of these. Genesis and Rush and a few different bands where they combined albums into one. You get two for one. So then, that was 2000. I don't know what year that. The two albums came out in 2006 and 2007. But, but then I have Migrant, of course, which came out in 2013. And I have the, the Migration Annex back there. Um, but yeah, the, the non-act related album, the first one he had done at that point. And I have Act 4, of course, first pressing. Um, you know, what is it, uh, Rebirth and Reprise, which is probably the most well-known at this point almost. It's got The Old Haunt, Waves, uh, Waves especially, Night in the Town, Is There Anybody There, Squeaky Wheel, King of Swords Reverse. It's, 
it is a modern classic. I, I deny it. I mean, to me, it's not a perfect record because the ending's a little bit. The songs at the end don't don't flow. I don't know. I, I've always that's been the only issue. Otherwise, I'd probably be giving it five stars, like I get back too. Maybe one day I'll just promote it to five stars and won't even care. So then I have, of course, Act Five, which came, that was 2015 that came up the next year, 2016, the last Act album. Favorites being Light, that's the best song on here to me. Um, but The Flame Is Gone, The Fire Remains. Um, hold on a second here. A little snafu. Um, the Moon Slash Awake. You know, um, the song where he mentions Dear Apparition, of course. I don't know if that's the, a beginning, I think that's what it is. The Revival, Mr. Usher, you know. I talked about this again in my review last year when I did that revisiting. I do need to do a, um, a songs ranking, though, and I will hopefully in the next... Let's say in the next six months. I don't know. So I also have, of course, the Indigo Child. Um, in effect, it's like an EP soundtrack. It has the title track and then a lot of clips from the, the short film. You know, I love the Deer Hunter. They're, they're one of my favorite bands, and so I'm kind of a completist for them. I don't have absolutely, like, there's people that have more stuff than I do, but I have, I basically have their whole collection on vinyl. Then I have an Anthemi, which is being repressed. They just launched it again. It's the second pressing of it, but, um... I showed him a video like about nine months ago, right? It was like January when I got this in the mail. The CD has different, like different artwork. It has the map and everything. This this version does not. I don't know if the new version is gonna have the map. I, I'm gonna spend the money on that. If I see it in the store, I may have to do that. I don't know. But anyway, Anthemai from 2022, of course. So then I've got these extras. I mean, I, I didn't even show. I've got, of course, all that is that all. All is that all is as all should be. The EP from 2017, where he wrote the songs basically at people's houses and stuff. Um, so that's under the Deer Hunter. Then of course I've got. Well, this is a Deer Hunter release as well. I've got the Fox and the Hunt, which is just interpretations mostly of Act Four and Act Five, or maybe just Act Five. String arrangements, that kind of thing. There's no vocals, I don't believe, on here. It's just it's all instrumentation, but. It's nice to have. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a good listen. It's a, it's a good interpretation. They're not identical. It's it's just taking some of the music and just reinterpreting it. Of course, I've got these other two things that were just under his own name, the Amor Nutrition Symphony he composed, which I haven't listened to this in a long time. From a, I love Casey Crescenzo as a fan fanboy. I I definitely want. I don't know how often I'll listen to it, but um, it is basically like traditional classical music you know, moderate composed with us with an orchestra. I don't think he plays anything, he just wrote it. And then of course his his new side project of a sort, when he was frustrated he couldn't get his new record out, he he decided to write some other songs or it, when it released these. Um Honorary Astronaut, which it does have some Deer Hunter elements, but it's more like um some of the stuff from the color spectrum. But um yeah, it's influenced by seventies like psychedelic pop especially, like ELO and David Bowie and that kind of stuff. But um EKE, the title track, Final Dream Machine, among others. I haven't listened in a while, though. I I think he's going to release something else from this eventually. I don't know if it will be before the next The Deer Hunter album, but I know he wants to. So, so moving on. Okay, so I have two releases from this band, which I still need to get at least a couple. Um, I haven't opened this. This is from Record Store Day a few years ago. The Deer Hunter... The Deer Hunter... The Decemberist, rather. Um, this is a uh, picaresque presents picaresque from 2005 and i have the, the tain with ep with five songs uh which came out i don't know, like 2003 50 year but this is a combination and i got colin to sign it and everything like that because i met colin at a library a few years ago he did it for his book signing but i, I like picaresque um i don't have the crane wife of course i don't have castaways and cutouts i don't have um hazards of love those would be the ones i would get I like this, initially I like this more than most of the records other than The Crane Wife. Last time I listened to it, I'm kind of on the fence. Most people look toward, like, Mariner's Revenge Song as, like, the proggy track on here. 16 Military Wives, I mean, The Infanta, it's got a lot of good songs on it, but I remember when I initially heard it, I almost liked this as my favorite. Um, that's why I wanted to buy it, but with the Decemberist, like, Muse, I always felt like, well, they don't need my money. I mean, it's like everyone's got them. I don't have any Muse. I'm just going to spoil it. I, mean, I don't have any Muse records on vinyl at this point. I me meant to buy a few of their sort of classics. So, kind of holes. I have a number of holes in my collection, unfortunately. So, so then, um, yeah, okay, Diablo Swing Orchestra. This is the one record. I got this for, it was like on a cutout. It was like for five bucks, seven bucks, something like that. 
Pin Pandora's Pinata. I like some of their records, Diablo Swing Orchestra. Their metal band with jazz instrumentation, you know, kind of using opera vocals, or though more recently not as much, but, um, you know, this record is sort of in the middle for where the year it came out for me. Um, the one, I think it was before this, or two before this, was the one that I have on, I think I have it on CD, where people around that, like, fair, that, that Ferris wheel, the, um, the merry-go-round, uh, the kids, that's my favorite. But this, this was still a decent record. You know, it's playful, it's, it's experimental, you know, it's, but it's not too far out there. I mean, sometimes the experiments get too far out there for me, but for, um, Diablo Soaring Orchestra, I, I, I've always found that they, they kind of, it's, it's in moderation. So anyway. I think it was like 2012 or you know this album came out 20 a lot of those albums kind of blurred because i'm not actually this was pressed and it was it 2018 okay that was i'm thinking of one of the records before because they have another album that has a similar name to it <laughs> anyway so that's that so this is dream the electric sleep um their album from 2000 was it 16 i think it was 16 uh beneath the dark white sky i have some of their albums on cd this is not my favorite. Of course, I have the, the came with the CD, but I still like this album. The new album, I think I kind of like a little more, but, um, you know, anyway, that's, that's Dream the Electric Sleep, uh, Beneath the Dark White Sky from 2016. So now on to the, yeah, the big, um, I thought I had this in the right order, the big Dream Theater uh, collection, which, I, yeah, I, have, I, I was ordering stuff before I hit the record button. There we go. All right, so I think this is the first pressing. I have I got this at Half Price Books, one of the first years we're collecting vinyl, like about ten years ago, when Dream and Day unite, of course, with original the original singer, not the singer when they were Majesty Charlie Do Dominici or Dominici. Uh, great record. I've talked about it before. I think people underrate it, but anyway, I still really like it. So I have Live at the Marquee, the live album they put out. Um, actually, no, I'll put uh, I have images and words. So this is their classic. Everyone knows them best for. Of course, Pull Me Under was their biggest hit, their one hit. Um, Le Le Learning to Live is my favorite song on here, but you know I've gone over a lot of this stuff. So then I have Live at the Marquee also, which has Bombay Vindaloo, which was never recorded, um, and has the Another Hand slash Killing Hand suite of sorts. Uh, Fortune Lies. It's not that long. It's really like an EP. But um, when I first got into Dream Theater, they only had three albums and then this. So that this was one of my things I got a lot of mileage out of. I want to say that maybe I had one or two of their tracks, like To Live Forever. I forget. I thought To Live Forever was on one of the studio, one of the, uh, the recordings they had. So, And I have Wake. Awake. This is my number one album. I'm not spoiling much before about that, but 1994, the last album with Kevin Moore. It has Scarred, has, you know, Lie, you know, has has Voices, and of course has Space Divest. You know, there's a lot. I've said a lot about it, you know, but. So then I have Falling to Infinity, of course. Uh, how it came out, of course, it still has a lot of good music on it. In you know, Lines in the Sand, Trial of Tears, you know, uh, Peruvian Skies, New Millennium. Even though the label was involved with it and everything like that, I still like it. Kevin Gilbert could have produced it. It would have been different. I have These are actually numbered. I didn't realize. This is number three, 438. I don't know if they've repressed these. And, I think this is the first run. This is three, 348 for both of them? 438 and three, 378. I don't know. I'd kind of be surprised if they're, they haven't been repressed since. That was like, I don't know, it was about 10 years ago when those came out. So then I have, of course, Scenes from a Memory. That doesn't have a number on it at all. 1999. Most loved album probably by a lot of fans. And I have Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, the double album. One of my favorites. You know, the suite, of course, on side three and side four. And um, the songs on side one and side two. It's interesting, side three begins with Disappear. That's weird. I did not realize that. <laughs> well, it's a matter of space on the record, I guess. But Blind Faith, Misunderstood, The Great Debate, oh man, love them. Even The Glass Prison, it's the best part of the five, five step, 12, 12 step, five song suite. Um, so then I have Train of Thought, of course, in 2003. That was 2002. Uh, the most, you know, maybe those metal albums, highly influenced by Metallica and um, some new metal in it, but I think, I find the songs work for the most part, even with some of the other elements and it's a little excessive. This is the first album to me they kind of started to emphasize more the musicianship than anything else, and it's kind of segued from there, unfortunately. But I still find that, you know, Endless Sacrifice, Endless Sacrifice, Stream of Consciousness, the instrumental in the name of God, As I Am isn't bad, it's catchy, 
sounds like Metallica kind of, but um, uh, you know, this dying soul has its moments. Honor thy father, you know. So, and I have Octavarium, which I don't know if they did as much emphasis on instrumentation on this, but I just found like Fran thought was the first one they really kind of did that. Octavarium, of course, has the title track, which references a lot of classic rock stuff and a lot of prog. It's a great piece. Um, I've talked about the These Walls, uh, Panic Attack, and Never Enough. Um, I Walk Beside You and The Answer Lies Within are like very U2 influence. I don't mind them. They've done other U2 influence songs I like more. Never Enough and Panic Attack are very Muse influence, and those are, you know, especially Panic Attack, I don't mind. Never Enough kind of got a little on the nose. Sacrifice Sons and The Root of All Evil. People love those songs. I got, I burnt out on them, especially Sacrifice Sons. They played it live a bunch of times, and I got kind of sick of it. Um, it's about 9-11, of course, you know, like people that passed that died in 9-11. Anyway, so then I have, I do not have Black Cloud, I do not have uh, Systematic Chaos on vinyl, but I do have Black Cloud and Silver Linings. Um, the Best of Time and the kind of Tustomy side, the second part of side three and side four, the second disc. Are the, are the highlights for me, you know, A Nightmare to Remember, you know, Rite of Passage. Even with Portnoy's a little bit of screaming, I don't mind it. So, you know, that record, that was the last record with Mike Portnoy, of course. Um, you know, and I thought I actually had... Well, I don't have it. I, I was almost certain it might be mixed in here somewhere else. I had, um... I, had, I believe I, I bought a copy of Dramatic Turn of Events, and, well, I'll show it at a later time. <laughs> So, I'll have to mention that in the video. Uh, I have Record Store Day Illuminate, they pictured as Illumination Theory, um, and then I have this bootleg uh, called uh, Puppies on Acid Live 1993, Rocky Point Palladium in Warwick, Rhode Island, which this is the through the Images Words Tour cycle. By the time Kevin Moore is ready to leave the band, actually, but um, yeah, I mean, they, they do. they do most of Images and Words on this, and they do To Live Forever, of course. This, you know. Live, they're a highly bootleg, highly recorded live band. So, but yeah, Illumination Theory from the self-titled album, which you know, I'm not crazy about, but I mean, I'm a Dream Theater fan. It was thirteen dollars. It wasn't a massive amount. It's kind of cool to have a picture disc. Besides the fact picture discs don't really play, I bought it for like collector's sake and for artwork's sake. So, continuing on with the D's, and I missed a few D's unfortunately. So, I didn't have these all in completely. I had the D's all together, but I didn't have them in perfect alphabetical order. So. This is Debashish Barakaria and Friends, Beyond the Ragosphere. came out in 2013. Fantastic live slide guitar player, but well, obviously East Indian um, elements in his music, but it's, it's, it's fusion, and it's great. Um, I have this on CD. If I ever get a chance to see them, him live again, I will. I love that guy. Um, all right, so, and then, okay, so Al Di Miola. I don't have a lot of his records on vinyl. I have, I have more of them on CD, but I have three related Al Di Miola records. Um, I have, what is this, Scenar Scenario? I think either I, I don't see them that often, or when I do see them, they're a lot of, they're pricey, but I don't look through the jazz stuff nearly as often as I wish. Um, this is a promo. This album came out in, I want to say, 83. I can barely read that. It has Bill Bruford... And Phil Collins on it. So two different drummers, Jan Hammer and Tony Levin. So the, the, the roster is great. That doesn't mean the songs are as good as some of his other stuff. But, but then I have his Tour de Force live album um, from, it was like 79? 82, actually. Um, Egyptian Danza, Elegant Gypsy Suite, you know. And he does Race with the Devil on the Spanish Highway, of course. you got to have that. <laughs> The guy's a, you know, he's a maestro. He's a he's a blazing guitar player, and it's, it's fantastic. So then I also have, which is not just him, but this is under McLaughlin, Demiol, and Pac. I should have probably under, put in McLaughlin, but this is Friday Night in San Francisco, a classic live album, the three guitarists, um, the guitar trio of sorts with Paco and, and John McLaughlin. But, um, you know, the song's like Fantasia Suite. I, you know, listen to it. I have it on CD. It's, it's just, it's everyone's favorite live guitar-oriented jazz album, at least of the last, whatever, 40-some-odd years. It came out in 81. So, um, all right. So, now we're moving on. I have only two records from this band, even though I know a lot of their other records. I have Machine Head from Deep Purple, 
course. I have it on CD. One of the first CDs I bought. I remember buying it years ago. I've gotten from Columbia House or whatever, from BMG or whatever, from the, the, the CD book club. And I have uh, Perfect Strangers, you know, from the 80s, which has the title track, of course. This is a promo. Um, that's mostly what I know it for, of course. It has Richie Blackmore, I believe. So, um, all right. So, I have the one Dirt Poor Robbins album on vinyl. Um, the one album they issued on vinyl, Dead Horse, of course, which is... Some of a compilation of the EP, the, the EPs, and then the, the little snippets they put out as a full length in 2020. Hard record for me to listen to because I think of the, the, the loss of my dog, of my family dog's Coco, but anyway. I have one album from the band Doves, Lost Souls, their debut album, which is their best album. It came out in 2000. Here it comes, Break Me Gently, See Sun Rise, um, Catch the Sun. It's textured, pop rock, very, they even, they even covered a King Crimson song on another album, but... Um, yeah, it has a Britpop element, but I think they were better. They, I like their style of that kind of music more than, of course, you know, Blur and um, uh, Oasis. So, yeah, Doves, Lost Souls. The last album I really liked, too. They, they, they did that comeback album, of course. So here's my whole Dredge section, the whole Dredge collection. I have two copies of Light and Motif, their debut album. One, the original issue. One, the, the anniversary issue, which came out just in 2021. But um, it's listed as 2001. To me, still the release date was 99, probably. 98 or 99. But um, classic concept album, debut album. Love Dredge, of course. And I have two copies, of course, of of, of uh, El Cielo, their masterpiece to me. They're, their, you know, fantastic record. The sleep paralysis concept and Woe is Me, Canyon Behind Her, you know, and Convalescence of Bundle. This is the 20th anniversary version I showed on video a few months ago when it came in. They're probably, you know, doing it largely to be able to fund the, the recording and release of their next record, which has been many years in coming. So I have one copy of the, the copy of Catch Without Arms that came out in black, black artwork in 2005. LCL is 2002, but it's 2005. And then I have the live album, Live at the Fillmore, came out 2006. I played this to death back then. Uh, includes a couple unreleased tracks. Um, what was it? Uh, Stone by Stone, which not unbuzzed, like a B side. Um, and what was it? The Warbler. But um, oh, it's fantastic. It's fan they're a fantastic live band. Covers a lot of that the music from those two first two records, the first three records, a lot of the Catch With Their Arm stuff. So then I have, of course, um, uh, The Pride of the Parrot Delusion from 2009. You know, there's, a, there's an air on this, or it skips at one point, I know, but. Um, I don't have Chuckles and Mr. Squeezy from 2011. I've meant to get that, but I never got around to buying it. So moving on, then I have uh, the Dukes of Stratosphere. This is not XCC. I, I've set these separate from XCC, but I have 25 O'Clock, the EP. Then I have the single um, Vanishing Girl. Yeah, Vanishing Girl. So, you know, I have some XCC I'll be showing, obviously, at a later video when I get all the way into the X's. So. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We'll see you next time.